These young people have come from all over Europe to this remote corner of Greece. <laughs> Among them is 25-year-old Maria Lapa. She attended university in this region. Now she's looking for a job, any job for almost any pay, just as long as she doesn't have to ask her relatives for any more money. The EU-funded youth excursion provides some relief from the daily grind. When a youth uh, has no other choice in order to, to earn their living, to, in order to survive, what, what can they do? What can we do? I mean, uh, we will compromise because less is better than nothing, really. And uh, yes, it's, it's very easy to, for us to be abused. The few jobs available are mostly underpaid. The last one Maria had was as a sales clerk for a mere 400 euros a month. And it had to be off the books. Hardly any region in Europe has such high youth unemployment as Epirus, even after the EU provided 6 billion euros to support job programs, including for youth in Greece. Christina Tsiuri, a qualified healthcare manager, took part in one such program for six months, and she's still waiting to get paid. Now she's unemployed and helping out in her mother's supermarket. The durations are very short. As soon as you've learned the job and you're enjoying it, you have to leave. They can't keep you on because of the crisis, and you have to start all over again, looking for a program and getting accepted. Greek businesses seem to profit most from the EU's youth programs. Christina's mother could theoretically employ out-of-work young people and have 500 euros of their wages paid by the program. This is hardly more than a shot in the arm of a sick person. Tell me, what young woman can start a family on this program? Can she pay her rent? Buy food? Or what? Ioannina, the region's largest city, is in urgent need of economic aid. But the president of the local chamber of commerce insists that the EU has to target its aid money far more effectively. Funds are given, but they don't have the desired outcome. The programs should target the needs of entrepreneurship and the businesses in order for the money to serve its purpose and for unemployment to drop. Epirus is in the rugged, sparsely populated western corner of Greece. Young people are leaving the mountain villages in droves for the cities. Most of them head to Athens, leaving the older people behind. The local economy is based on agriculture and tourism. There is little industry in this remote area. Like his brothers and parents, Nikos Vasilakas is unemployed, but he's determined to stay even if prospects are few and the days empty. We have no work. We're in a very difficult situation financially. Sometimes we find a day's work. We don't ask how much. We just do it for whatever we can. But a day's work doesn't come along every day. The international youth group stops by the old stone bridge of Kokori, most of them have no idea what the future will bring. Maria Lapa doesn't even know where she'll find the money for the next month's rent. Her mother sends her the groceries she needs to live on. With this crisis, with this situation, I cannot expect, uh, you know, a chaotic uh, and a weak state to help me. Uh, you know, so yes, I, I think that uh, I am responsible for my own life and uh, my survival. She sees no alternative but to leave Epirus, 
as soon as she can afford a ticket, Maria Lapa plans to seek greener pastures in some other European Union country.